Now, if we're reading an existing persistent object, the, in order to read it, we have to have a reference to it. So again, any object that you're looking for, you'll have a reference to it, presumably from an instance variable in an object that you already have. We'll start from having an object ID, or an object pointer, an OOP. Of course, the special objects are already in the OOP. So if we recognize, again, we'll have an instance variable that has some object reference in it. If we recognize that it's a special, then we don't have to do it, go to the disk. It's already there, we just reference it. If it's already in memory through some other process, then it will actually be local and have a direct pointer. In that case, the tag will be 000, and we just know where the address is of the object, and we can just reference it directly. If the tag is 001, then we know that the object is in the repository. Now, it could be in memory in the shared page cache, but we need to look it up through the object table. So we take the object ID, go to the object table to find out what page it's on. Then we go to the shared page cache and say, is this page already in memory. If it is, then we have the object immediately accessible to us in memory. If the page holding the object that we want is not, then we have to read it from the repository into the shared page cache. And then if we want to reference it directly, we then copy it from the shared page cache into memory, into our local process memory, switch it over to being a direct reference memory pointer, and then we can manipulate it internally. Now, again, if the object is not in the GEMS RAM, or local space for that process, it has to come from the shared page cache. If the object is not in the shared page cache, then we have to load the page. We can't just load the object, we have to load the whole page that contains the object. To load the page into the shared page cache, we have to find space in the cache. And that's where we discuss some of the complications related to the cache and finding a frame algorithm. So we check the free frame list for space. If the free frame list is short or there's no space, then we have to scan. So we scan the shared page cache for an unused frame that's not in the free list and then we can use that frame. 